I have a lot of videos showing you how to fix your air conditioner, but none of those videos do I show you how to check freon pressures. So I just thought in this video I'll go ahead and show you how you can check your freon pressures to see if they're right on or if they're low or high or whatnot. So to begin with, of course, you will need a set of gauges. The temp probe, you don't really need for checking. If you want to know what the problem is, you're going to need a temp probe. But anyways, this is what a standard gauge looks like. There's different kinds of gauges that read different kinds of refrigerant scales that have different kinds of refrigerant scales I should say. Uh, for example mine has R22 right there in green and R410A and 404A which is seldom used but 410A and R22 are the most popular so if you're thinking of getting a refrigerant gauge make sure you check what kind of refrigerant you have on your nameplate on your AC unit. For example mine right here says HCFC22 that's the same thing as R22 that's just the long chemical name for it. It's like hydrochlorofluorocarbide something something. But short name for it is R22. It says I have five pounds, 12 ounces factory charge. That means this thing came with a factory charge of five pounds, 12 ounces. That does not include any Freon inside of the pipes. So the actual charge inside this unit may be over five pounds, 12 ounces to compensate for that line set. So probably like six pounds, six and a half pounds, seven pounds I would guess. But anyways, let's take a closer look at this gauge a little more. Here's, I got two gauges right here. I'll take my gloves off for now. Let's take the glass covers off of this one so you can see the numbers better. And I'll also get a flathead screwdriver. Okay, so the outer scale, the outer scale is always gonna be your PSI. So it goes by increments of five. Every single little dash is increments of five. Then 50, 100, 150, so on. Uh, this is, the blue one is always gonna be your low side or the suction pressure. And then the red one is gonna be your high side head pressure or also known as high side pressure. And if your arrow is ever off, let's say for some reason it starts at like five or 10 PSI, there's an adjusting screw right here. Mine is just slightly over to zero. If I want to adjust it, I just put my flat head in there and you can adjust it just slightly below. You can adjust the arrow or calibrate it that way. Also, as you can see, these hoses attach to the manifold gauge set, but here's one without any hoses. These top ones right here are the ones that actually go into the valves. The ones in the back are dummy ports. As you can see, they have no holes. It's just a dead end here. <clears throat> so you got your manifold right here. There's a hanger. You can hang your gauge set with a wrench. You can unscrew this and take it off if you don't want it. Also these handles, the valves themselves, you can completely take them off. You can take the gauge sets off right here with the wrench as well. As you can see there's some Teflon tape when I screwed them in. Sometimes they do go bad, they go inaccurate, and you do have to replace them. But this thing can be all torn down all the way up to just the body right here. But anyways, I'm going a little off track. As I was saying, the outer scale is your PSI. The green scale, it says right here in green, R22. That's gonna be your R22 temperature. And then there's R410A, which is the pink scale right here. That will be the temperature of your R410A refrigerant. So now that we went over to basics, let's just hook up my gauges and show you how I would do that. Notice how I'm putting on gloves. Freon comes out when it hits air, it comes out at negative 40, so it's really cold. And if your finger stays on it a little too long, you will get frostbite. I've, had, I've gotten minor frostbite a couple times. It's not very pleasant, it's like getting a burn. You know, you're walking around and it's always that throbbing, burning feeling. So better not to get burned by that stuff. Your ports will be usually at the entrance of the AC. Uh, your Freon pipes come out right here and they go into the air conditioner. As you can see, my ports are right here. This is the valve port. The valve port is usually going to be bigger. You don't want that one unless you have a big king valve. Um, I won't go into that right now. Most of them are going to be Schrader valves with a small cap like this. But anyways, these access valves will usually be on the outside of the AC. Once in a while, they go inside and you have to take the cover door off to access it. So you'll need a wrench, usually or sometimes they're just finger tight nuts that you can take off, they're plastic. Mine are these metal ones that I have to take off with the wrench. So you put your adjustable wrench on it, crank it open. 
to access the Schrader valve. And this Schrader valve is really the simple Schrader valve. It's almost like the car tire stuff. So on your hoses, you got the Schrader depressor. So once you're putting your fitting on, this thing will depress that and allow pressure to go into your hose. So let's put that back on for now. Also, there's three kind of fittings that are most commonly used. You got the regular fitting, you got the ball valve fitting where you can turn it off. So the Freon will stop right here, not go into the hose. That's very useful to have. My regular setup on my gauges is a low loss fitting and two ball valve fittings. The low loss fitting I like to put on the high side because that's usually the higher pressure. And what the low loss fitting looks like is like this. See how it's twice as big? And it literally does exactly what it sounds like, low loss. So when you're taking it off, barely any refrigerant escapes. It's just like a little squirt. Whereas when you're taking one of these off, it kind of fumes a little more as you're taking the hose off. But anyways, you take off both nuts from your Schrader valves, and then you take the other nut off. Remember how I mentioned that your blue side is your suction side? So blue is suction or low side, red is high side or discharge, head pressure. The discharge or the high side is always gonna be your thin line. The suction or the low side is always gonna be your thick line. So the blue, blue gauge will go to your thick line. And before you put your hoses on, make sure that your valves are fully closed. So for example, this one was open right now. Close that up. Otherwise it'll allow refrigerant to go in here and go into the other two hoses as well. So make sure this side's closed off. That means the refrigerant will come in and just stop right here. It won't go any further. And make sure you close this valve off as well. So those two are closed. I like to just turn my ball valve off while I'm putting this on. And just try to do this quickly because a little bit of refrigerant will come out. In my case, that was it was so minimal that you didn't even see it, but sometimes it'll kind of fuss like that. But anyways, now that I got that on, I can open up the ball valve. And if you take a look at my pressure when I do that, boom, it goes up to 100 PSI. And next, we want to put on our high side, which is the red hose. I can turn that off as well for now. Sometimes that's not a very easy spot to put these on, but most of the time they're pretty accessible. Okay, so as you can see, when you're putting these on, sometimes the Freon will squirt like that with a little cloud. That's why you wear gloves, because negative 40 will give you a frostbite really quick. Sometimes your gloves will even turn white. But anyways, we got that hose on. We turn it up as well. Turn it on as well, I should say. And our high side pressure is a little bit higher. My AC was just running, so that's why it's a little higher. But basically, um, when your system is off, your pressures will equalize, which means your low side and your high side pressures will eventually get to the same point where the, they're the same pressure. That's when the unit is off. And then when it turns on, your high side pressure will go higher and your low side pressure will go lower. And I like to reference my Freon charges by temperatures. And what I mean by that is the green scale for R22 and this pink scale for the R410A. But basically your normal operating pressures, unlike a semi-hot day, let's say it's 80, 85 degrees, will be on the low side, it'll be anywhere from 40 to 45 degrees. So if you watch this green scale, it'll be, the arrow will be right here between 40 and 45. That's normal pressures on the low side. And then the high side is typically 110, 115 degrees, which will be about right there for the R22. And as you can see, the pink scale is a little different. So 4045 on R22 is right here, but R410A is higher pressure, so 4045 for it is over here. So the pressures will be different between the two refrigerants. That's why you have to know which Freon your system uses.
So now what we're gonna do is actually turn the AC on and you're gonna see the pressures drop. So this one will go down and this one will go up. So let's get it started. So I've let my unit run for a while. You usually want to let it run for like five to 10 minutes for the pressures to stabilize. Right now in Minnesota, that's where I live, the outside temperatures are not too hot. It's probably like 70 degrees, maybe 65. That's why my high side pressure is lower than it should be. Usually it's over 200 PSI, but right now it's a little lower and that's okay. Usually the biggest focus should be the low side the low side should be between 40 and 50, typically. And mine right now is at about 42 degrees. The R22 scale, that's the kind of refrigerant I have, which is 75 PSI. And most air conditioners, when they're working properly, you're gonna see that suction line start to sweat, like mine is right there. And after you're done checking your pressures, sometimes they'll be too high if both pressures are too high that means your condenser coil is dirty you want to wash it off if they're very low that may mean you have low evaporator airflow or maybe your um, charge is actually low you got a leak somewhere but anyways I'll save that for another video once you're done checking your pressures the way I like to take the hoses off is the high side first so I'll close my ball valve off if you don't have a ball valve just take it off quick some refrigerant will squirt out, but most of it will stay inside. That's why you wear gloves. So you go quick. Take it off like that. And just so you know, this is rare, but sometimes that Schrader valve will get stuck. And by the way, those are replaceable. There's a tool, a Schrader valve replacement tool that you can use to replace those Schrader valves but sometimes that Schrader valve gets stuck and a little bit of refrigerant will keep squirting out. After you're done panicking, you can take a flathead screwdriver and just, with gloves on of course, try to hit that Schrader valve to make it stop leaking. I got my red side or the high side off. I put it on my gauge set here, the manifold. And one other thing I should mention is the biggest enemy of an air conditioner unit, the Freon system, is moisture. You do not want to get water inside of your unit. So if it's raining, you're better off not checking while it's raining. So now I got my high side back on the gauge set. And what I like to do is turn off my yellow auxiliary hose here, open up my red, like that. If there's any air, air is bad for the AC Freon system as well. If there's any air or water, droplets or whatever I like to just purge my hose out just a little bit by opening it up you'll see some refrigerant come out like that and as you can see I still have over 100 psi refrigerant in here which is like an ounce or two of Freon and I don't really like wasting it if you take off your hoses and leave that refrigerant stays in here so I purge out the air and whatever I have in here I actually suck back into my suction side so first you want to purge this as well, just in case there's any kind of little air bubble, because non-condensables are bad. So you open up that, with the hose off of course, I already took it off, and you open up the low side, slowly, and you just throttle the refrigerant that you sucked out back into here. As you can see, my arrow is kind of bouncing around there. There you go. Now you sucked most of the refrigerant out of the high side hose back into the unit. And now I take off the low side as well. And put it back on my manifold. And then you can just release the pressures in your hoses a little bit so it's not a bunch of pressure inside of your hoses. Like that. And like that. And there you go. Don't forget to put your caps back on. On both your low side and your high side. Tighten them down with a wrench. Like 
that. You don't have to go too beast mode on it. There you go. And you have successfully checked your Freon charge. And guys, if you noticed when I was putting on my high side hose, the red one, and taking it off, did you see how a little bit of Freon escaped there? That's where these low loss fittings come in nice. And I usually do have a low loss fitting on my red side here, but mine started to leak through. Like whenever you'd put it on, there'd still be a little bit of refrigerant just constantly leaking out. There's a little repair kit for that. I just haven't gotten around to fixing it. That's why I'm just using a standard ball valve. But like I said earlier, my normal setup is a low loss fitting on the high side and then two ball valves on the low side and the auxiliary. And I just want to say that people that do not have any kind of HVAC background or education probably should not be messing with Freon because you could do more damage than good and potentially hurt yourself doing it. So if you don't have any background and you're not sure what you're doing, I wouldn't recommend messing with this. But basically what I showed you is how you would check your Freon charge. I hope you found this video helpful. If I missed anything or if you want to add something, please do so in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to mash that like button on your way out and we'll see you next time.